Yes, everyone, it's time for my weekly dose of pain and suffering, a.k.a. the acolyte. Because, you know, after that crap fest of last week, why not have a soap opera filled nonsense, Fifty Shades of Grey type crap that is so boring you actually want to drive a lightsaber through your head? Yep, that's the acolyte. Oh yeah, boy, that's that's going to be something to deal with this week to get through this because I am telling you, I had to stop this multiple times to ask myself, what the hell am I watching? So now that I think about it, what I've been doing since I started watching this, I think I could feel my brain cells dying, but that's, that's probably a question my doctor's going to have to answer. So let's dive into this week's show of what's going on so last time we're wrong after all the nonsense happened that nobody cared about we get back here now and we find osha waking up inside of a cave and we are um, because you know she got taken away by um by you know this um by smile Ren. apparently now he has officially been named by the internet smile Ren. okay that's that's his official name now, Smile Red. Right. And she apparently looks and has an injury to her side. And this injury apparently came from when me force pushed her off of a ledge that was less than a foot high. And she got injured on this side. Now, when she was on a ship that crashed face first into a planet, she wasn't injured. When she was thrown across the, 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 the uh, literal jungle by Smile Ren at speeds that would have either broken her neck or paralyzed her for life, she wasn't injured. But apparently getting forced, gently forced, pushed off of a ledge that, that is less than, a, less than a meter, a foot high, injures you. How does that make sense? Well, you're not supposed to think about it like with anything else in this show. So that's what happens. So she checks that there, sees what's going on, and looks around and realizes that she's inside Smile Oren's home. And apparently he has a jacuzzi because for some reason, when you're not murdering Jedi, you need to relax. Yes, he has a jacuzzi. Do the Jedi have a jacuzzi? Not that I'm aware of, but he has one. She gets up, walks around, goes and drinks the man's water because, you know, that's clearly her house, so she knew what she wants. And then she heads outside onto this um, place, and, and apparently it's on a rock, on an island kind of thing there that, you know, we get the acolyte. I just want to make this point very clear. I did not put in this here. It's literally an unknown planet. Right? They couldn't be bothered to name the place. No, just unknown planet. So this Sith who is supposedly supposed to be hiding on this unknown planet has a ship parked nearby that he probably have to swim to. Has a cave inside of the mountain with a with a jacuzzi so he could relax after a hard day of headbutting lightsabers. Good for him. Really good for him. Oh so yeah, the island is there. She um so wrong, all of this. And then she sees Mr. Sith there go strolling along the beach going to wherever it is he has to go. So she decides to follow him. We get back to Kofar now, and May and Saul have just left the planet, right? Because um, good old Master Shang-Chi still hasn't figured out that she is not 
OSHA, right, still hasn't figured that out. So he tries to send a message to the Jedi Council and apparently there's some interference, he can't do it. Now, normally one would expect if you're going to send a message to the Jedi, you should probably start off with Sith murdered my entire team. That would be the, the clearest thing to send, but he sends a message saying that, you know, um, his team was wiped out and with the message breaking up and stuff, so he didn't get it through as he wanted to. And yeah, he looks miserable as hell. May is wandering around the ship there and stuff and things. She comes up there and is sneaking up behind him with that with that with that blade to kill him, which doesn't make any sense because you were the one who wanted to defect from your evil master and go to the Jedi. And then when the Jedi tried to arrest you, you then tried to escape. And now you're on the ship when you, you had the opportunity to kill Master Shang-Chi when he was knocked up. And said you, you were uh, allowed, you allowed to get up, help him up. And now you're on the ship and you want to kill him. So what exactly is it that you want? Do you want to go to the Jedi? Do you want to be evil? Do you want to kill people? Are you just being deceptively confusing to annoy the shit out of people. What do you want? I'm telling you, it's a, it's a, it's a smogus board of confusion when it comes to this show because you never know what's, and you never know what the hell is going on. And, and honestly, you don't care anymore after that. I mean, just really and truly don't care. So she's sneaking up behind him and you would think as a Jedi Master, he would notice the murderous intent coming up behind them, but no, he doesn't. He just notices her and he still thinks she's OSHA. Yeah, so he says he has to go and fix something and tells her to take the helm so she could fly the ship out there because, you know, maybe she doesn't survive crashes and things like her sister. Who knows? So he goes to um, check the, 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 um, the, the con connection thing there, takes it off, waits 30 seconds, Gets so angry and huffy and stuff before it turns it back on because apparently it's a modem that you need to turn on, turn off for 30 seconds and it turns it back on, I guess. And this Basil thing is still running around the ship. And apparently Basil is the only one who knows that May is pretending to be Osha. I mean, you'd think the Jedi Master would be able to figure it out or the fact that you could just take a look at her forehead. She has a literal um swirly pattern you know imprint thing on it but no when you're an idiot these things don't matter and rather than basil i don't know go over to the master shang chi and tell him hey you know um osha is really me you know I, I don't know maybe he doesn't speak his language but he could write it down or they have translation software something but no he just creeps around the ship Taking the little um, head of the droid thing that Osha has and plugs it in so it comes back on. There is so much useless nonsense going on in this episode. You really don't care. It just keep they just keep putting things in to fill space so you don't ask the really hard questions as to why as to what did you spend a hundred and eighty million dollars on. Clearly you embezzled money at this point, but we don't know why, because this makes no sense. Whatever. Yeah, they think I'll back on. So we go back to the unknown planet, because that's what's going on. Right? And Osha is following Smilo Ren, who goes down to the beach and decides to take off his clothes to go for a swim. She's out there watching him go sneaks up gets his um gets his lightsaber but of course he knows that she's there and you know automatically tells the thing she picks up the lightsaber like she's ready to do something with it could have just killed him and been done with it but whatever so he asked her if he could be allowed to come out and um go and um change his stuff there and thing and she is just focused on it <laughs> You understand me? She just focused on this other lightsaber, apparently. But, you know, I mean, I, I think that Amanda Stenberg is, I, I believe she was bisexual at one point 
Then she was gay and she went back to bisexual. Then I think she went back to gay and now I think she's as the them or something and the other. Bottom line, buddy, I, I don't think she's going to be polishing your lightsaber. That's what well, your other lightsaber. That, that, that probably ain't going to be happening. You understand me? And this whole thing is just some weird attempt to show him without his shirt on and uh, our shirt off and stuff because apparently they're trying some kind of 50 shades of gray type weirdness that nobody asked for because this whole this whole thing is just really really stupid he just makes a bunch of a bunch of useless comments about some stuff and talks with her back and forth. then he just walks away and she just lets him and just follows him like you could have just taken him out you know it's not to say that it's like you watched him murder Jedi, you know, just last week, but whatever. Back to this now, and Master Shang Chi comes and hugs up um, May, who's pretending to be Usha, and he tells he tells me that it's time he does the, the time, it's time, 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 time that he that he faces the Jedi Council for what happened sixteen years ago. I was, I, I, and the fact of the matter is. I think somebody needs to tell Leslie Headland this. Nobody cares. Literally nobody cares anymore. This was supposed to be some kind of murder mystery thing. I don't even know what the hell it is anymore. But I'm I'm telling you, the audience doesn't care. The actors don't care. The the, the lesbian space witches that got the the, the, the the apparently got they apparently died of boredom or might have been killed or whatever, they don't care. Nobody cares. Literally nobody cares because every time somebody starts to talk about what happened 16 years ago or whatever, some nonsense interrupts them. He started telling her he needs to do something and, and face the truth and all of this and she wants to know what's going on and then bam, you know, something interrupts them. So she goes to look for what's going on and then we get back to Leslie Headland's wife who looks like a green M&M. Is apparently talking to some senator about something what's going on. I mean, okay. at, at this point, it's, it's, it's pretty damn clear that they're attempting to set this whole thing up to, to make some kind of attempt to cover up that the Sith had returned because apparently that's what Smile or Ren call themselves as a Sith, that's what he called himself. And they try to cover this up, like, you know. Uh, we need to need to cover this up so that so, so, so that the Jedi don't lose political standing, all kind of thing. Kind of like what they did in Star Trek Discovery, where it turned out that Michael Burnham was the one responsible for the Klingon war and everything, and nobody ever talked about it because apparently they decided to make it classified, and we all kind of rolled our eyes and was like, what kind of shit is that? But whatever, that's what they were doing. So. And then this Jedi comes in, right? And <laughs> oh my God, this is the soyest looking Jedi I have ever seen. Honestly, it's like they went out specifically and found the most soy boy looking white male they could find and just put him as a Jedi and he comes in and he literally looks terrified to even talk to Leslie Headland's wife who looked like a green M&M and tells her how you know um they just received this transmission from um from our master from our master Shang Chi and the transmission was broken up but apparently it sounded like if you know his entire squad had been wiped out and I'm like, wait, that's the message he was trying to send. That's exactly the message he was trying to send. So you trying to tell me that, that, that you didn't get the message or the message was broken up, but you got the message? Like, what kind of sense does that make? Whatever. We... Honestly. So she tells them to get ready. They need to go. Um, Osha is still following Smile or Ren around who is talking about some things and how you know the Jedi this and she and tells her how you know um it's not souls it's not a uh, master Shang Chi's power that you sense it's your own and then we get this ridiculous part where 
May goes into the um the thing to, to to check on what's going on. Apparently, she sees this thing, and then you see Basil show up, and I don't even know what Basil's attempting to do, and she's like confused, and then he runs over to her and actually stomps on her foot, injuring her for some reason, and escapes before the robot thing spews some kind of you know, um, robot cum on her face or something like that. I, I, I don't even sure what the hell went on there, but apparently this was supposed to be some kind of interesting part, and then she just factory resets Osha's um, drawing thing back to whatever. We go back to Osha and um, Smile Oren, and he's there cooking food because he's perfectly calm in his own house there while she's holding his lightsaber because he apparently is quite confident she would just kill him with it. I wonder why. Godless of it, it's just a bunch of nonsensical jabbering that nobody really cares about. And then she just, you know, storms off after that. And the, the, the absolute stupidest thing is that he has to follow her and tell her, um, you know, aren't you supposed to kill me with that lightsaber? And then he actually goes out of his way to, to antagonize her just to get a rise out of her so she could ignite the lightsaber and put it there and not even want to finish him off because we all know by now that she is an angry sycophant who needs some serious help. And, I tell, and you know, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. I think this is a, this is a, poorly written poorly portrayed soap opera episode and then she leaves so um jedi knight soy boy is there and um leslie headland's wife shows up and i'm telling you this woman cannot act for the lump every scene she's in she sucks the life out of it her facial expression looks like she's allergic to the green paint that that, that they gave for her I'm not even sure why, and she goes there with them. Um, May is on board the ship, and she and Saul start to talk about, um, you know, um, did you tell me everything that happened um, up 16 years ago? And he's about, oh, you know, um, you were a child, and she's about, she's about, I'm not a child, no, what happened, and all of this back and forth nonsense. And of course, before anything can even be resolved, what ends up happening? The bloody, the, 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 the bloody literal power just comes back on and that's the end of it. Because they keep dancing around this, what happened to those lesbian space witches 16 years ago? And you're like, okay, at this point, Nobody gives a shit. Why do you keep bringing it back off the act like it's some kind of deep mystery that everybody needs to be interested in? Whatever. So she goes to the comms and is trying to get a hold of somebody on it. I think it's doing Coruscant or whatnot. And I'm like, didn't weren't you just trying to kill Master Shang Chi? Now you're trying to reach people on the comms. What do you want? Really? What the hell do you want? You want to kill somebody and you want to turn yourself in? What is it? Like, seriously, what the hell do you want? God, boy, and while she's there, Master Shang-Chi comes up behind, comes up behind her and um, stuns her with the stun gun, the most powerful stun gun in the universe. And you would think, well, hey, he finally figured it out. No, Basil apparently told him because he's still an idiot. That's it, he's still an idiot. Basil could have just told him that from the very beginning and can save everybody all of this confusion, or he could have had some common sense with the force to figure it out, but again, that would be too much. So he goes, so Master Shang-Chi goes um, um, into the driver's seat and has the ship jump into hyperspace and leave right as the Jedi ship with Leslie Headland's wife and soy boy and look at them show up like literal seconds and like you know um Shang-Chi leaves then they show up like very second after they show up we may 
Osha is still there while Smile Ren works on his helmet. And apparently, the helmet is made from a, from a material called, I think it's catharsis is its name, and it can block lightsabers, right? It can block lightsabers. But here's the thing about it. What he tells her is that the helmet, you, you cannot see out of the helmet. Plus, it blocks your ability to use, with it the blocks your ability to access the force because it, it kind of locks on like sensory deprivation. So then how the hell were you fighting? If you couldn't see, if you couldn't access the force to operate it, how in God's name were you fighting all those Jedi and stuff while you had this helmet on? Make it make sense now, people, but no, they, they, they don't want that because they just need to put on whatever crap that they think is going to happen. This is the worst written soap opera I have ever seen. Like every what get every week it gets worse. God, God. hey, they you know about the Jedi, and then he, he tells um, you know, um, you could try on the helmet for yourself, and you will see. I wonder what's going to happen. Look, <laughs> I really shouldn't laugh at this point, but. People, I regret to inform you that the greatest Padawan master to ever exist actually is dead, right? Somebody needs to call up the ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn and inform him that lightsabers kill people again. So he has been vindicated, right? Lightsabers kill people again because they see... Jackie, yes, that's the name, Jackie, lying there along with the bodies of all the other Jedi that Master Shang-Chi just left there. He was like, um, listen, sorry, I have things to do, so, you know, I'm going to have to let the wildlife deal with all. Yeah, and he gone. That is it. Just left them there. So then going around seeing all these, all these, um, these dead Jedi and stuff there, right? And hmm, literal Jedi soy boy asks Leslie Headland's wife, what happened here? So she says to him, what do you see? And then he, uh, these, 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 are, these are his actual words. Eh? They were all taken down by a master who, you, who had incredible power and stuff. I, I took them on easily. So then why did you ask? You clearly saw exactly what happened. Why would you ask her? What, what exactly do you think she knows that you don't? She got here the same time with you unless she snuck away from Coruscant, murdered them all and then came back. How would she know anything other than what you know? Bloody stupid moron, boy. Eh, while they are there, uh, they are there that this happens. Right? She pulls out her, her lightsaber whip and cuts one of the bug things in half. Now, I, I, I'm guessing a lightsaber could be a whip. Sure, why not? But can you imagine the damage that could do if she, if she even mm-hmm. barely missed for a second? My God, boy. at least the Jedi could literally control what's in, what's in there you know, range, but the she have a lightsaber whip? What the hell? But she could murder so many people in that by accident. So yeah, Leslie Headland's wife, no, uh, uh, and then apparently Soy Boy, Jedi Knight, actually, actually asked this question, right? Um, was it, was it Saul who did it? Master Shang, she, and she's like, that's a, she's like, that's a bold accusation. He, but yes, but he possesses the power to do this. So you're trying to tell me he murdered his entire team of Jedi and then called you all to tell you what happened. Huh. That doesn't seem very smart at all. But then again, this, this is the acolyte. So yeah, she tells them they have to go back and to get the bodies and stuff. And they go because apparently she finally cares. So May wakes up on board the, the ship and she realizes that she's um, shackled down and Master Shang-Chi is there. 
she tells him to release her and he about no um he's he about yes he will set her free before they need to talk isn't that what got you into this problem in the first place you literally let counterfeit asian ezra miller aka smilo ren go free after confirming that he provided the poison that killed the 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 um the the the, the, the jedi at the temple you understand me i know you want to let the person go who killed master trinity and gave said poison to that jedi at the temple like you are realizing a pattern in your stupidity at some point here but he tells her that he's going to let her go but first they need to talk he needs to tell her about um what happened 16 years ago and um you know um he 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 he's had, he's had something to say to her all this time i mean shouldn't you be saying that to osha you didn't even know she was alive on till like about what 6 weeks ago at at uh, you know any timeline of how this things being progressed weekly or so, so but whatever that's just the way it goes so osha goes towards my lorenz helmet and the said hey you know this looks cool let me pick it up and put it on because that's the sensible thing to do and when she puts it on no starts to breathe like um like I'm um, Darth Vader that's how it ends that is literally how it ends because idiots write this and apparently that's what we're getting and apparently maybe i'm just saying maybe next week we might finally get to find out what happened to the lesbian space which is that nobody cares about at this point and whatever is going on maybe maybe osha is going to join the dark side and then maybe may is going to have a yet another turn of conscience and decide to join you guys i i don't know i don't care this getting so sick and this crap churning out week after week with nobody making any cases that any writers convince that we're all a bunch of idiots who need this crap in our life what is this show supposed to be about it's not a murder mystery it's not a it's not some kind of jedi story it's not, not a star wars story not anything it's just it's just leslie headland's crap painted out there for the world to see you know what i'm just kind of sick of this let me know your thoughts on listening back in, in in the comments i have a different opinion i'd love to hear it if you like video hit that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already ring the notification bell to be notified every time i upload a new video And I shall see you all next time. Take care.